Segment tonight, all the major TV news operations gearing up to cover the G12 presidential campaign, which has already begun. Now, you may remember last time around, the TV media was very friendly to then-Senator Barack Obama. A study by the Center for Media and Public Affairs said that CBS News coverage was the most pro-Obama operation. 73% of CBS News stories positive for him, 31% positive for Senator McCain. What a gap. NBC News was 56% positive for Mr. Obama, just 16% 16 positive for McCain. ABC News fared best among the fair and balanced, 57% favorable for Obama, 42% favorable to Senator McCain. With us now is the anchor of ABC's World News Broadcast, Diane Sawyer, who is not behind the desk in the last campaign. That was Charles Gibson. It was. With the little nose glasses with Sarah Palin. You remember that interview, right? I had given him your home phone number. Let him call yeah, he, you Well, I told him that that hurt him. That, that, that interview hurt Gibson because it, it wasn't so much the questions that he was asking the governor because he, she's been on this program and we've had back and forth and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't um, respond too well if you, if you put, it looked like he was talking down at her with the glasses on the nose and the this. And I think that hurt him. And is she very different now, you think, than she was then? Because I haven't interviewed her no. directly. I'd like no, to. No, I, I think Sarah Palin is a, is, a, is a working class woman who reacts uh, emotionally to what's in play. And I, that's the way I am. And you know, if she doesn't like it, you know right away. That's why I like talking with her. Um, but Gibson hurt herself and ABC News. But as you just saw, ABC News had the most balanced coverage. But it was all favorable to Obama. Uh, all the three networks, and I think that has to change. Well, again, I want to stand up for my buddy if I can't hear. <laughs> glasses or not, I, do you wear reading glasses? No, okay. I don't need any See, glasses. See, now you're, if you're, the bionic can't call someone <laughs> That's right. with reading glasses. No, but you know the pose, it was the per, look, I've known Gibson as long as you've known Gibson. You know he's a he's, wonderful man. He's not a snotty guy, he's not, he's a regular guy, he's but not. he came across that way. You know that. Come on. I'm gonna I'm gonna defend him because I think he asked really good questions. I do. I think it was all no new. No beef with the question. The moment when it was all new, everybody was just no beef with the questions. It was the condescension that I don't think he meant, but it, it came across that way. And that's the question to you guys. Are you aware in this campaign of how much scrutiny you're gonna be under? You, Diane Sawyer, are gonna be be held accountable for how your news operation treats both candidates. We are aware. And we are really proud of our team and what we're going to do. So you're going to be fair and balanced. We, we not only are you know our team: Jonathan Carl, Jake Tapper, George Stephanopoulos, Sherrod Alfonsi. You've got Amy Walter. We have an incredible. But team. they're all and liberal you, people look, in real life. Look, take a, everybody's from diverse backgrounds. No, but they're all liberal people in real life. You know that. I worked at ABC. It was. I, know, I do not know one. that. I do not know that. In fact, I'm, I think you I'm, might be very confounded if you know uh, what happened. But it doesn't really matter. Look, I think there are more liberals on my staff than conservatives, but it doesn't matter if the product is fair. Look at this study. This study is exhaustive. And, and, and it just wasn't fair the last time around. Barack Obama got kid gloves treatment. But I want to say again, you're talking to the network. Obama White House remembers this, the network that broke the Jeremiah Wright tapes. You are talking to the network. I went down personally to cover the Tea Party when the Tea Party came in. I went down and broadcast the show from there. You are looking at a network that plans this time around. We have fantastic political coverage coming. We're even talking about having two people cover some of the big issues as they develop, so that it's not the one person, which often happens, giving you both sides of an issue, but two people giving you two ways of looking at the story. That's a good idea. But and you only have 22 minutes, so you're really limited in a lot of things you can do. That's so like I got an hour to bloviate out here every night, <laughs> so I can do a lot more stuff than you can. But we have a lot of broadcasts. We have Nightline. We have morning. Well, I'm only. Well, I'm interested in Diane Sawyer and World News. I don't okay. think those pinheads at Nightline do. I'll, I'll deal with them one on one. But I am concerned as an American, pinheads not just as a journalist. I, I am concerned. You are bold, fresh piece you bet of I am. adjectives. But when this study comes down in my desk, I'm concerned. I am concerned but as an American that the three network news nightly broadcasts are in the tank for the Democratic candidate and i don't think that's fair but again look at what we do look at what All right, so you're going to a whole new change now i want you to come back mid-campaign uh -huh. and, and, we'll, and we'll i'll be back okay good i will fully now, be back one of the things that you've changed and you know i worked at world news when peter jennings was on the desk 
um, and you were working, I think, 2020 at the time, or one of those news at magazines? Prime time. Prime time, okay. And one of the did. things that Jennings resisted, okay, was an advocacy position in a, in a broadcast. He was an old school guy, just straight down the line, another liberal guy. But Jennings, he, he wanted fairness. That, that's why I, you know, he liked me. But you have taken a little bit more advocacy in the sense that you're, you're trying to get Americans jobs on World News, right? Made in America. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, we're not, we're not uh, deluded about the world economy and the global economy, but we have talked to every single person we can to ask the same series of questions, which is, what will create jobs for Americans? And is there something, when, when we're galled that American flag pins are made overseas. When we go into the Museum of Natural History, we go into the Smithsonian, and their gift shops are filled with Japanese, filled Chinese stuff, of other things. Is it time to start saying to ourselves, "What is it in our closet? What in our house?" Do you know that? You know our, our number: three dollars and thirty-three cents per person a year will create ten thousand American jobs. Is it, is it a union cents. intrusion? Though, because the the manufacturing can be done for far less overseas than here, because the union rules here, as we've covered now for months, are, are pretty stringent. Well, you have you have wages overseas that have been so much lower than here. Yeah, because they don't have unions over there. Not a function of union. You've got Chinese. You've got the billions of people in China, but they're rising, you know, 17 percent a year. The Chinese salaries are rising, and some companies are bringing them back here because not only are the American workers fully competitive, but they're more productive. Yeah, and what we're just that. saying, all things being equal, all things being equal, why not say when you walk in the store, hey, is there, some, is there something American? I got a GM car. Know about? No Volvo for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm buying a GM. But you know one of the things we're going to be asking? Yeah. It's a really interesting question. Which creates more jobs, actually pound for pound more jobs? A car, a GM car made here, or a Toyota car made here? Well, they, true. they got the plants here jobs? and all of that. But yeah, I, I think you're right. Too. You're on the right track. Buy American if you can. Will you take the challenge? Uh, sure, whatever you want, Diane. The challenge is to go into your house and you email me and tell me. All right, and I'll set on fire anything that's not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Diane, yeah. sorry, everybody. We're watching her. She'll be back, and okay. we appreciate it. Thank you very and much. I'm going to be back. Excellent. Plenty more ahead of the fact.